Greetings, motherfuckers! My name's Sam, and today I'm here to talk to you all about the beautiful Ireland. Land of Guinness, thick woolly jumpers, and, in part, me. Yes, I am myself half Irish, and it's therefore my birthright to talk in a terrible Irish accent as much as I please, even if it's deeply offensive to do so, and so would invoke the scornful wrath of my ancestors. Haha, <laughs> you deal with it, guys. But what percentage of Irish people are ginger nuts? What obscene act did ancient Irish people perform to pledge allegiance to their king? Why not try and guess in the polyp above? And how many germs does the Blarney Stone have on it? Many, many hundreds of thousands of people have kissed that thing. It reminds me of me, actually. Uh. Two out of three of those questions are going to be answered, so pour yourself out a cliched pint of beer, stereotypically eat some potatoes, and prepare yourself for 101 facts about Ireland. Number one. Ireland, also known in the Irish language as Er, is an island located in the North Atlantic Ocean. It's separated from the larger island of Great Britain to the east by the North Channel, the Irish Sea, and St George's Channel. Number two. Ireland is the third largest island in all of Europe, behind Iceland in second place and Great Britain in first. Number three. Politically speaking, the island of, uh, Ireland is divided between Ireland, often referred to as the Republic of Ireland, and Northern Ireland, which itself is a part of the United Kingdom. Are you confused yet, Americans? The Republic of Ireland covers roughly five-sixths of the island and is home to approximately 4.8 million people. Northern Ireland, though, located in the northeast of the island in the remaining sixth, has a population of over 1.8 million, giving the island of Ireland a total population of around 6.6 .6 million. About as many times as I said Ireland in that fact. Number four. Evidence suggests that the earliest human presence in Ireland dates back to around 12,500 BC, which is later than other parts of Europe, owing to the fact that it's an island on the western edge of the continent and it takes time to get to places. God, stop being so impatient, guys. Number five. Gaelic Ireland emerged by the first century as Celtic cultures arrived in Ireland and Britain from Central Europe. A few hundred years later, in the 5th century, the island was Christianised by Christians, no less. Number 6. Before the British waltzed in and declared that all islands base are belong to us, Ireland was never unified under a single monarch. There were instead hundreds of minor kings constantly waging war with each other on a nearly permanent basis. Number 7. Every time I do a 101 Facts video, there's usually one fact that is so utterly ridiculous I initially refuse to believe it, until further research forces me to accept it as genuine. In this edition of 101 Facts, that fact is this. According to some experts in ancient Ireland, people displayed submission to a king by sucking on his nipples. Well done if you got that right in the poll, by the way. So, male nipples do have a purpose. Number 8. As a result of this custom, one could hobble a potential royal rival by slicing their nipples off. If a man's were chopped off, then how could they possibly hope to exert dominance over their subjects without a nice juicy set of nipples to suck on? I mean, obviously. Number 9. Murderers in medieval Ireland were often forced into the custody of the deceased's family, where they were kept as slaves. Yep, it's not as nice as you first thought. Alternatively, if the family weren't in the mood to have their delicates ironed by the guy who murdered their loved one, they were also perfectly within their legal rights to kill the murderer themselves. Fair's fair, after all. Number 10. Following the Norman invasion of Ireland all the way back in the 12th century, everyone's favourite coloniser, England, came a knockin' and claimed sovereignty over the island of Ireland. England slowly took control over more and more of Ireland until the 16th and 17th centuries, when it was entirely taken over during the Tudor Conquest. Number 11. Throughout the 1600s, a system of anti-Catholic regulations known as the Penal Laws were established to disadvantage the Catholic majority and Protestant dissenters in a variety of cruel and unjust ways. At various points in time, for various periods, Catholics were barred from voting, holding public office, serving in the Irish army, and from entering legal or teaching professions. Intermarriage with Protestants was banned, and any children of mixed marriage were always brought up in the Protestant faith. Catholics weren't even allowed to own horses worth over five pounds. Number 12. One of the most tragic periods of Irish history occurred in the 1840s and 50s, in what is known as the Irish Potato Famine or the Great Hunger. Almost all of Ireland's potato supply was struck by a blight that left them inedible. As a direct result of this, Ireland experienced a population decline of approximately 2 million, as most people either starved to death or emigrated, mostly to the US, in hope of a better life. Number 13. The potato famine was so extreme that the population of Ireland still hasn't recovered. Before the 1840s, Ireland had a population of around 8 million people, which is well over a million more than today. Number 14. 
With the Act of Union in 1801, Ireland officially became a part of the United Kingdom, but the majority of Irish people were never really huge fans of being subjugated and systematically oppressed. After several decades of being in the United Kingdom, the Catholic Irish rose up and fought a war of independence against the British between 1919 and 1921, leading to the eventual partition of the island, which created the Irish Free State. Northern Ireland, however, remained a part of the UK, which everyone was happy with and caused no disagreements or anger whatsoever. Number 15. Ha, <laughs> just kidding. Between the 60s and the 90s, anger at the political status of Northern Ireland erupted into violent civil unrest that teetered on outright war at times. During this period, which was rather underwhelmingly known as the Troubles, over 3,500 people were killed, until the bloodshed was halted in 1998 with the enactment of the Good Friday Agreement. Number 16. When asked if the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland should be reunified into one big super island, 67% of Irish people in the Republic of Ireland responded that they would be in favour. However, that figure drops a paltry 32% when the proposition is expanded to include a rise in taxes. Number 17. The Troubles even managed to spill over into the realm of science fiction. One episode of Star Trek The Next Generation, which aired in 1990 with the title The High Ground, I have the high ground Anakin, was initially banned in Ireland and the UK, due to a line of dialogue which suggested that Ireland was unified in 2024 after a successful terrorist campaign. Well, I guess we'll see how that turns out. Number 18. The flag of the Republic of Ireland is a rather attractive combo of green, white and orange, known as the Irish Tricolour. The green represents the Gaelic tradition of Ireland and the country's Catholic majority, whereas the orange stripe represents the Protestants who followed William of Orange. The white column in the centre stands for peace between both Catholic and Protestants. Haha, <laughs> yeah, nice try. Number 19. The colour most often associated with Ireland is obviously green, but in actual fact, the official national colour of Ireland is blue. That's why the Constitution of Ireland is printed with a blue cover rather than a green one. Haha, <laughs> but you're always wondering why it was blue, hey? But now you know, it's not to do with Smurfs at all. Number 20. Similarly, the national symbol of Ireland is not the shamrock, as many people believe, but the Celtic harp. This makes Ireland the only country that has a musical instrument for a national symbol. Number 21. Ireland's patron saint is St. Patrick, duh, who many people assume was himself an Irishman, but the real McCoy was actually British. He was born in roughly 390 AD to an aristocratic Christian family somewhere in Roman Britain, most likely in Wales of all places. Number 22, oh, got a new song about being delicate. Uh. This is somewhat corroborated by the fact that most historians believe St. Patrick's real name was Maywin Sukat, which is about as Welsh as it gets, frankly. And that's coming from someone with a Welsh surname, which I won't reveal. Number 23, Ireland is also well known for its distinct lack of snakes. Even Britain has a handful of serpent species, like for example my ex-wife, but there are zero in Ireland. It's said that St. Patrick was responsible for driving all of the snakes out of Ireland, but in reality, the last ice age made both Ireland and Britain inhospitable to the cold-blooded slitherers. As the cold receded, a few snakes were able to make it to Britain before it was cut off from the rest of Europe, but sadly, snakes never made it to Ireland. Number 24. Though Ireland's lack of snakes is most well known, Ireland is also deficient in a number of other animal species that are common elsewhere in Europe. For instance, Ireland does not have moles, weasels, polecats, or roe deer. Number 25. Every single polar bear alive is a descendant of one female brown bear who lived approximately 50,000 years ago in, you guessed it, Ireland. Number 26. Ireland is known as the Emerald Isle, owing to its lush vegetation and rolling green hills. However, in 2013, only 11% of the island was actually covered in forest, compared to the European average of 35%. Number 27. The ancestral language of the Irish is called, shockingly, Irish, although it's known as Irish Gaelic, stop giggling, or sometimes simply as Gaelic. Around 1.6 million people in Ireland claim to have some competence in speaking Irish, but only 380,000 truly fluent speakers remain. Number 28. Though the Irish have their own ancestral language, they've also made interesting additions to the English language too. The term boycott, for example, is derived from Charles Boycott, the land agent of an absentee landlord from Ulster. In 1880, Boycott refused to reduce rents for his employer's tenants, which prompted the entire community to collectively say, what a dick, then completely ostracise him. The isolation was so extreme that shops even refused to serve him, and eventually Boycott's name took on its present definition. Number 29. If one of your four grandparents is or was Irish, you can claim Irish citizenship no matter where you live or where you were born, even if you know so little about Ireland that this video is the first time you've ever heard about it. 
This also grants you access to the European Union, which gives you the right to live and work in any EU country with no restriction. Isn't that great? What a great idea. That's great. What a great thing to have. Number 30. Approximately half the entire population of Australia claim to have Irish ancestry, which works out at approximately over 12 million people. In case you hadn't realised, that's a good few million more than the population of Ireland itself. Number 31. <laughs> Similarly, over 40 million people in the United States claim to have some form of Irish descent. That's over six times the population of the island of Ireland. Famous Americans of Irish descent include Neil Armstrong, Conan O'Brien, and Jennifer Lawrence. Yes, haha, <laughs> I knew it. We're meant to be together, we have so much in common. Oh, I'm thinking a summer wedding in Dublin. Number 32. However, despite the massive amount of Yankee Doodles who claim to proudly have ancestral roots of the Emerald Isle, only 27% of Americans are actually able to locate Ireland on an unlabeled map. Number 33. The entrenched Catholicism in Ireland was such a powerful force that until 1985, Irish people needed a prescription to buy condoms. Some people with certain medical conditions still do, but I wouldn't know anything about that. Number 34. In fact, the profound religiosity of many Irish people has left Ireland as the only country in the EU where abortion is still illegal. However, that being said, abortion is allowed in order to protect the life of the mother. Number 35. Not only that, even blasphemy remains a crime in the Republic of Ireland, and can cost offenders up to €25,000. However, the last blasphemy prosecution occurred all the way back in 1855. Although, in 2015, someone reported English humorist and actor and British national treasure Stephen Fry to the authorities after he called God evil, totally selfish, and an utter maniac. No charges were brought against Fry as the police were unable to find anyone who was sufficiently outraged by the remarks. Number 36. As you may or may not know, Ireland was officially neutral during the Second World War, leaving us in the UK to fight off the Nazis all on our own. I'd say that as if I was there, or I wasn't. I was busy not being born. This is only partially true. Ireland disregarded their own declaration of neutrality in a number of ways, such as providing intelligence to the British and allowing them to use Irish airspace. Number 37. Despite the fact that the Irish have a reputation for ginger hair, only 9% of the Irish population are actually natural redheads. The nearby nation of Scotland actually has the highest proportion of gingers with a whopping 13% of the population. Number 38. The people of Ireland also have a reputation for being big drinkers, to the point that they are often negatively stereotyped as drunks and alcoholics. Funnily enough, pubs in Ireland are legally prevented from having happy hours, in which alcoholic drinks are significantly reduced in price. That being said, these rules are occasionally flouted by Irish people who won't let the man keep them down. Number 39. Ireland is well known for the black stuff. No, not mildew, although with the climate of Ireland, there's probably a lot of that there. We are, of course, talking about the famous Irish dry stout beer known as Guinness. Perhaps one of Ireland's greatest exports, except perhaps yours truly. <laughs> Around 10 million pints of Guinness are produced in Dublin every single day. Hey, do you love or loathe Guinness? Let us know in the poll up above. But only if you're old enough, because if not, I'll be sued in YouTube court. Number 40. Though Guinness is often seen as a quintessentially Irish brand, the company was, for many years, quite hostile towards Ireland's Catholic majority. Before 1939, if a Guinness brewer wanted to marry a Catholic, he was requested to resign, and the bias against hiring Catholics existed well into the 1960s. Number 41. This could have something to do with the fact that the founder of Guinness, a man by the name of Arthur Guinness, was himself a Protestant and a committed Unionist. So much so, he was even accused of spying for the British. Oh, and also, he had 21 children. No biggie. The Meaning of Life Funnily enough, more Guinness beer is drank in the African nation of Nigeria than in Ireland. This might have something to do with the fact that Nigeria has a population around 28 times bigger than Ireland. But hey, I'm just some guy who runs a fact-based YouTube channel. What do I know? Number 43. According to Ireland's Health Research Board, a staggering 75% of all alcohol consumed in Ireland in the year 2013 was done so during a binge drinking session. Number 44. Speaking of drinking, there is a bar in Ireland called Sean's Bar. It's said to have opened all the way back in the year 900 AD, making it well over 1,100 years old. And that bar is still operational. Number 45. Speaking of old Irish things, the oldest hotel in Ireland is the Wooden Bridge Hotel. Located in the Vale of Avoca, County Wicklow, it was opened in 1608 and continues to operate today. That's over 400 years of dealing with people stealing the damn towels. Number 46. Speaking of really old Irish things, Hook Lighthouse at the top of the Hook Peninsula in County Wexford is one of the oldest working lighthouses in the world. The current structure has stood for 800 years and counting. Number 47. 
Speaking of really, really old Irish things, there's an ancient Irish temple located in County Meath called Newgrange. It dates back to around 3500 BC, predating both Stonehenge and the Pyramids of Giza, though it's slightly less impressively a simple circular mound. However, the construction of Newgrange was clearly very sophisticated, as it allows light to penetrate through the burial tomb for around 19 minutes during the winter solstice. Number 48. Ireland is also known for the Blarney Stone, a block of limestone built into Blarney Castle in County Cork. The popular legend says that those who kiss the Blarney Stone are endowed with the gift of the gab, an outstanding verbal eloquence or skill for flattery. Celebrity Blarney smooches include Michael Madsen, Mick Jagger, and Winston Churchill. Number 49. The popular western holiday of Halloween traces back its origins to the Gaelic Harvest Festival of Samhain, which was held on the 31st of October to mark the end of the summer. The pagan festival morphed and developed over the centuries, creating the modern day holiday of Halloween. Number 50. The Boyne of Coracle, known as the Curragh, is one of the oldest surviving form of boat in Europe and is still being built in the same way that it was in the Neolithic age. It's essentially a big waterproof bowl with a seat in it. Number 51. Though the guillotine is commonly associated with France after everyone there went a bit shop happy in the late 18th century, the first recorded use of the uber efficient beheading contraption occurred in Ireland all the way back in 1307. Number 52. The world famous story of Count Dracula was created by Irish author Bram Stoker, who released the gothic novel Dracula in 1897. The Dracula is supposedly inspired by the early Irish legend of Habatak, an evil chieftain who was betrayed by his subjects and slaughtered by the hero Cathrain. Not one to take that level of disrespect lying down, Habatak rose from his grave each night to terrorise his subjects and drink their blood. Number 53. The Royal Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, known as the RSPCA, was founded in 1824 by an Irish politician called Richard Martin. Martin was one of the first animal rights activists, whose efforts were so well known that King George IV named him Humanity Dick. Number 54. In 1859, Irish scientist John Tyndall was the first person to correctly describe why the sky is blue, which, if you didn't know, is because more of the sun's blue light is scattered by the Earth's atmosphere than light of any other colour. I mean, duh. <laughs> I should explain that too in another video, which you can see in the card up above. It was ages ago though, and you can see me, so yeah, just be warned. Number 55. Our. Although recipes for various beverages involving chocolate have existed long before the substance was well known to Europeans, modern forms of chocolate milk were first popularised by the Irish botanist named Hans Sloane. In the 1700s, chocolate milk was sold as a medical elixir, presumably to cure the terrible condition known as not currently drinking chocolate milk. Number 56. In fact, Ireland has influenced the world in a variety of unusual ways that you may not have even considered, you self absorbed cretin. For instance, the snazzy golden statuette given to people who'd done acting good at the Oscars was first designed by a Dublin born Irish American named Cedric Gibbons. Number 57. Not only that, an Irishman by the name of James Hoban designed the US White House where the president currently lives, even though he clearly doesn't want to. Number 58. The tune of the Star Spangled Banner was composed by the great Irish harper and national composer of Ireland, Turlo O'Carolan, who died around 35 years before the American Revolution. A caravan was blinded by smallpox at the age of 18, but that didn't stop him from becoming the Katy Perry of his day. Number 59. The African American civil rights activist Martin Luther King Jr. is known to have had Irish ancestry through his paternal great grandfather. Number 60. The, sadly, former President Barack Obama also has Irish roots. His maternal great 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 grandfather, a fellow by the name of Falmouth Kearney, came from Money Goal in County O'Flay and moved to the US in 1850. Number 61. Ireland's first ever Olympic medal was won in 1924 by Jack Butler Yeats. Hilariously, the event in which he competed was not even slightly athletic, as Yeats won the silver medal for painting, with his 1923 piece entitled The Liffey Swim. Number 62. However, Ireland's success at the Olympics isn't solely confined to arts and crafts. Boxing is by far Ireland's most successful sport, with over half their medals coming from good old-fashioned pugilism. Number 63. But you know what? Ireland doesn't even need the Olympics, it has its own Olympics with blackjack and hookers. Well, not quite, but in the Bronze Age, Ireland was home to the Teltian Games, or the Aonac Teltian, which were athletic contests held in honour of deceased goddess Teletiu. The Games were revived for a few years from 1924, but as Europe moved closer towards the Second World War, the Games were discontinued in 1932. Nintendo 64 the nation of Ireland is also considerably successful musically, having won the Eurovision Song Contest a total of seven times, more than any other country in the history of the competition. And yet their entry in 2008 was a turkey called Dustin. 
Drop the ball there, Ireland. <laughs> Number 65. In 2002, Ireland was the first country in the world with the stones to put an environmental tax on plastic shopping bags. Since then, dozens of other countries have followed suit, paving the way for the eco-friendly utopia that is absolutely never going to happen. Number 66. Not only that, in 2004, Ireland became the first country to introduce a public smoking ban, which, again, several other nations have since copied. Number 67. Ireland was the very first country to legalise same-sex marriage via a popular vote. Not only that, the vote wasn't even slightly close, with a whopping 62% of Irish voters saying yes or poor. Oh. In fact, of all 26 counties in the Republic of Ireland, only Roscommon didn't vote in favour. Shame. Shame. Number 68. Across the entirety of Europe, the Irish report the lowest annual number of UFO sightings. Either the people of Ireland have got better things to do than to claim every sufficiently large bird as a UFO, or... Nope, no, that's probably it. Number 69... They called the Irish Rover. The capital of the Republic of Ireland is a cheery little town called Dublin. The city's original name was Dublin, meaning Blackpool, which, funnily enough, is actually the name of a famous seaside town in England. The modern Irish name for Dublin is Bla Clea, which means the town of the Hurdle Ford. Number 70. County Dublin, which as you may have figured out is the county that includes the capital, is the island's third smallest county. However, roughly a third of Ireland's population lives there. Mmm, that's some good population density right there. Number 71. The garden outside Leinster House in Dublin was once home to a large statue of Queen Victoria, but it was removed for obvious reasons when the Republic of Ireland became independent. Not wanting to weigh such a lovely bust, Ireland gifted the statue to the Australian city of Sydney in 1988, a present for its 200th anniversary. Number 72. Dublin's Whitefriars Street Church is home to the earthly remains of St. Valentine, the Saint of Love. Well, maybe. As it happens, there are several saints named Valentine or Valentinus, and lots of people claim to have the remains belonging to one of them. Still, that doesn't seem to bother the many people who visit the church to pay their respect to the great man, or great men. Number, Number 73. Dublin is home to Ireland's National Leprechaun Museum. <laughs> of course, that's a thing that exists. The museum educates and informs visitors about the magical race of Irish fairies, known to cause mischief and hide pots of gold in rainbows, as you do. But, though you may assume that the museum is fairly child-oriented, it offers adults-only guided tours that explore the darker, scarier side of Irish folklore. Number 74. Between 1860 and 1920, Dublin was home to the largest red light district in Europe, in an area surrounding Montgomery Street, which has since been renamed Foley Street. At its peak, it's estimated that approximately 1,600 prostitutes worked there at any one time. The area was so popular, it was even immortalised in an old Irish song called Take Me Up to the Monto. Number 75. O'Connell Bridge stretches 45 metres across Dublin's River Liffey, and interestingly, is 50 metres wide. O'Connell Bridge is thought to be the only traffic bridge in Europe that is wider than it is long. Number 76. In 2004, pranksters installed a memorial plaque on the bridge dedicated to Father Pat Noyes, which amazingly remained unnoticed until May of 2006. Eventually, the hoaxers admitted their work was a tribute to their father, with the name Father Pat Noyes being a play on Pater Noster, the Latin for Our Father. Dublin City Council originally planned to remove the plaque, but eventually decided to leave it in place, as it's actually kind of cool. Gives tall guys something to mention after all. Number 77. Ever the troublemakers, the denizens of Dublin have also lovingly bestowed various statues and sculptures around the city with adorable nicknames. A large bronze statue of a naked woman, located in a water fountain, was dubbed the Floozy in the Jacuzzi. And another statue at the bottom of Grafton Street of a busty fishmonger was named the Tart with the Cart. Four. In an apparent appeal to gender equality, the Spire of Dublin, a 119 metre steel spire, has been named the Stiffy at the Liffey, and the erection of the intersection. Number 78. One of the oldest place names in Ireland is that of Talact. The name Talat is thought to derive from Tam Liact, which simply means plague pit. How lovely. Number 79. The tiny island of Lamb Bay off the coast of Dublin is home to a rather surprising population of animals, wallabies. The roughly 100 wallabies of Lamb Bay are descended from a surplus at Dublin Zoo, which was forced to relocate the animals to Lamprey in the 1980s. Number 80. As recently as the 1920s, couples in Ireland could legally marry each other on St Bridget's Day in Telltown County Meath by simply walking towards each other. Likewise, if things didn't work out, they could divorce by heading to the same spot and walking away from each other on a subsequent St Bridget's Day, which is celebrated on the 1st of February. Number 81. In 1922, workers renovating Ireland's Leap Castle in County Offaly found so many human skeletons that it took three cartloads to remove them all. 
The remains were found impaled on wooden spikes and appeared to have fallen through a trap door to their deaths. Number 82. Almost all the Botox in the world is made in a single factory in Westport, Ireland, meaning all the frozen face fashionistas of Beverly Hills are carrying a little bit of Ireland with them at all times. Number 83. In the small town of Middleton in County Cork, there is a distinctive monument constituted by nine 20-foot stainless steel eagle feathers arranged in a circle. Called Kindred Spirits, the sculpture stands in appreciation to the American Chocotaw Indian tribe, who, although impoverished and oppressed themselves, somehow managed to send $170 to Ireland for famine relief in 1847. Number 84. The construction of a motorway in County Clare was delayed by an entire decade. It was also ultimately rerouted. Why? Well, it was to protect a sacred tree that was thought to belong to fairies. Yep, that's right, fairies. Number 85. The longest place name in Ireland is for a small village in County Galway called, oh god, okay, let's give this a go, Makuna Ed de la Horia, or whatever the heck that says, which literally means pig-shaped hill between two seas. Number 86. But Ireland isn't just known for its sort of long place names. Like all countries, it also has a few place names that are just flat out weird. Examples of bizarre Irish place names include, but are not limited to, ovens, muff, and knobber. There's also a place in County Cork called Kill Britain, which may sound like a violent, troubles-related threat, but actually just means Britain's church. Number 87. There's a village in County Limerick simply called Hospital. Sadly though, it does not have a hospital, which is almost criminal. It would have been called Hospital Hospital. What a missed opportunity. Number 88. Similarly, the Irish have a litany of often fairly insulting nicknames for each other. Those from Limerick are known as Buttermilks, Tipperary people are called Stone Throwers, and people from Roscommon are known as Sheep Stealers. Those from Wexford are known as Yellow Bellies, Kill Kenny Folk are Wet the Guns, and perhaps most bizarrely, an old nickname for Wicklow people is Goat Suckers. Number 89. Northern Ireland is famous for the Giant's Causeway, an area of around 40,000 mostly hexagonal basalt columns located on the northern coast of County Antrim. Legend has it that feature was created by giants, hence the name, but legends are often wrong. The real cause of the causeway <laughs> was an ancient volcanic eruption that occurred over 50 million years ago. Number 90. According to the Sunday Observation Act, it's technically illegal to go to the cinema on a Sunday in Northern Ireland. Apparently the punishment for this egregious crime is a fine of up to 50 pounds. Number 91. The production of the smash hit TV fantasy drama Dragon and Boobathon Game of Thrones employs more locals in Northern Ireland than the civil service. Probably the most famous Northern Irish GOT star is none other than Hodor, played by Christian Nairn. Nairn hails from the city of Lisbon, not Lisbon, Lisbon, which sits on the boundary between County Antrim and County Down. Number 92. In Northern Ireland, ring donuts are often known rather unappetizingly as gravy rings. This is due to the fact that the word gravy is an old-fashioned term for cooking oil. Still doesn't really explain it, but hey. Number 93. Northern Ireland's Tato Crisps are manufactured on the premises of a genuine 500-year-old castle named Tandrogi Castle. The building is referred to as Tato Castle in commercials. Wow, a castle of crisps. A hangover's dream. Number 94. Northern Ireland is also home to the annual bog snorkeling competition, which aims to find out who's the best at snorkeling in bogs. There are no winners in bog snorkeling. Number 95. The capital of Northern Ireland is Belfast, a city which Oscar Wilde once famously opined as only having one beautiful building, a former warehouse at 1 Donegal Square called the Water Office. This building is now a Marks and Spencer's. Number 96. In the past, Belfast was almost apparently a centre of gender equality. Women could hold any office at Queen's University in Belfast, 12 years before women were even allowed to study in Oxford. Number 97. In 1829, milk of magnesia was invented in Belfast by Irish physician James Murray. Thanks for curing heartburn, Ireland. Number 98. The RMS Titanic, arguably the most well-known ship in history following its infamous shanking at the hands of a particularly sharp lump of ice, was built in Belfast, Northern Ireland. The site of the Titanic's construction is now home to a museum dedicated to the doomed vessel, where you can debate endlessly as to whether or not there was really enough space on that door for Jack. Spoiler alert, there totes was, Kate! Number 99. Belfast is home to Samson and Goliath, two of the largest freestanding cranes in the world, which have since become symbols for the city. Each crane lifts loads of up to 840 tonnes to a height of 70 metres. I wouldn't walk underneath them if I were you, that sounds like tempting fate to me. It's number 100! Oh, oh, oh. Belfast has its own version of the Leaning Tower of Pisa in the form of the Albert Clock. The large clock tower leans by about 4 feet and is also sinking, so yeah, enjoy that while you can, guys. 
Well, I'll be damned. It's number 101. Oh, God, I'm so proud. The official legal name of the city of Derry in Northern Ireland is London Derry, And no, it's not the Derry in it, by the way. The city was renamed from the original Derry in honour of British traders, which, as you can imagine, does not impress the city's Catholic population. Subsequently, many of the signs around the city which read Londonderry are often vandalised, with the first six letters commonly crossed out or covered up. That was 101 facts about the Emerald Isle, the beautiful island. Did you learn anything new or did I miss anything? Let me know in the comments below. And hey, you may want to kiss your screen like it's the Blarney Stone, because I have two videos for you that you're going to love. Look at them, there they are. Click on one of them right now, I dare you. It's good luck. Anyway, I'll see you next time. Good boy.